talk radio, music, and podcasts from the Korean Peninsula. KoreaFM.net. While South Korea's E6 visa is designed to allow foreigners to work in media, entertainment, and sports, critics say the visa program is also being used to fuel the nation's sex industry as young women are lured to South Korea under the guise of hotel or entertainment work, but then are pressured or forced into prostitution. I spoke with human trafficking experts to learn more about the entertainment visa system and how traffickers are using it to bring sex workers into the ROK. My name is Tain of Yename. I am the executive director of the Coalition Against Trafficking in Women, which is one of the oldest international anti-trafficking organizations that focuses on ending human trafficking and commercial sexual exploitation of women and girls. Entertainment visas is, is, a, is a pretty common phenomenon that, um, that can be legitimate. Um, especially in countries where immigration restrictions are pretty stringent. So, yes, you can imagine that there could be cultural exchanges either with musicians or artists. But traffickers uh, very often hide behind these entertainment visas. So the, the classic scenario would be a vulnerable, disenfranchised young woman from the Philippines or or, or elsewhere in Asia who reads about a net or who um, who is approached by someone who promises her a, a job in in Korea and so once she's once she arrives in Korea what happens her passport is confiscated that job as a restaurant hostess or um, as a singer in a bar actually is non-existent and now she's in debt bondage they paid for her ticket in Korea, so she owes her trafficker money, and in order to repay not only the the airline ticket and uh, her housing and food, she needs to uh, repay the trafficker or the pimp or the bar owner or the karaoke owner um, through prostitution. While programs such as the E6 visa can be used for the sex trade, that's not South Korea's only connection to human trafficking. We know that the Republic of Korea is a source, transit, and destination country for uh, for trafficking, whether it's men, women, and children, either for sexual servitude or labor servitude. So in that sense, they are not unique. Most countries around the world, unfortunately, are also source, transit, and destination countries, which means that When a country is a source country, that there is domestic trafficking, um, and that would be particularly applicable to women and girls who are coerced, enticed, induced into the sex trade by pimps or traffickers and who have never left Korea. Um, But there is also uh, international trafficking, uh, traffickers bringing women from Africa, from other Asian countries, um, in particular the Philippines, um, into Korea for both labor and sex trafficking, but primarily sex trafficking. So nobody really knows how many people are trafficked around the world. The numbers range from 4 million to 27 million, but um, every entity agrees that the majority of People who are trafficked are women and children, and that the majority of that population winds up bought and sold in the sex trade. And and Korea is no exception to to that um, contention. South Korea and other countries can do more work in the fight against human trafficking, but recent actions by the government have been perceived as a step in the right direction. It sounds like the Korean government unlike many other governments, is really trying to take steps to remedy the situation. So, for instance, they are cognizant of the fact that these entertainment visas are are still being abused. They are carrying out studies through the National Human Rights Commission or uh, through other venues that are looking at the issue of trafficking. Um, There's still a, a, a long way to go. They are inching toward what is known as uh, the Nordic model or the equality model, which is a legal framework 
through which only the buyers of sex are punished and the women who sell sex, and I say women, you know, obviously there are men and boys who are being bought and sold as well, but they would not be criminalized. Now, there still needs a, 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 a lot of effort to be done, a lot of work to be done to train law enforcement so that they don't further brutalize these exploited women, that they don't arrest them, that they don't subject them to, um, you know, to abuse, including including sexual abuse and rape. But the Korean government, compared to you know their neighboring countries, is in fact ahead of the game, so to speak, in terms of awareness about the issue and trying to take steps uh, to remedy it. And and in, in large part, it, it is because of a very strong uh, women's rights um, movement and, and structure that is really putting pressure on the government to ad- address these, uh, these issues of, of violence and sex trafficking. And finally, while many organizations and people work around the clock to help one day put an end to human trafficking, there are also those who dedicate themselves to helping the thousands of human trafficking survivors. My name is James Pond, and I am the um, director of survivor care for all of Hope for Justice. Uh, And Hope for Justice is an organization that works through the rescue, restoration, and reform of policy issues in countries to uh, bring an end to human trafficking, both for uh, labor and sexual exploitation. You know, we started out specifically working with minor victims. We were working with children. And um, and what we found in terms of sexual exploitation as a field is about 95% of all victims of sexual trafficking had a very similar and shared history. And that was that before the age of seven, um, girls were um, sexually um, abused by a family member or someone close to them. By the age of 11, had been sexually assaulted and by the age of 14, had been trafficked um, for commercial sex. And we saw this across the board, whether you were in Moldova, um, you know, Cambodia, Indonesia, or Greece. So we were finding that girls do need specialized services to deal with, you know, sort of the complex sexual trauma issues they're dealing with, as well as sort of the lack of um, adult life skills and affect regulation issues, oftentimes connected to those early childhood abuse issues. So, you know, in working with children, I do believe that they need specialized care. Um, I believe that it's probably best for for um, victims to receive care in their own country where they're going to um, receive the sort of cultural sensitivities, the absence of language barriers, and um, probably will find services that are, are, are appropriate for their specific um, you know, culture and nation, um, as well as those support services afterwards. Now, in working with adults, I think it's much different. Um, I think we've got to look at the issues of you know, what, their, what their life trajectory is going to look like in terms of going back to a host country or staying and being given provisional visas in the country that they were trafficked in. And one of the things that I see falling um, by the wayside is in terms of victim care, victims do need um, care and specialized services. It's, it's obviously more expensive than prevention, but we have an entire generation of you know, girls, women, and, and boys and men as well um, that have been severely abused in trafficking situations that need very specialized care. And so we've got to look particularly at how are, how are we going to meet the needs of these thousands and thousands of people that are going to need um, assistance and help after we've um, removed them from these situations of trafficking and exploitation. For KoreaFM.net, I'm Chance Storland.